veggies come from dirt. <laughs> weeds. Weeds. Oh, you monster also. Oh, weeds are bad. Very bad. You see, weeds like this soak up the water and nutrients from the soil that my veggies need to grow. If my veggies can't grow, my food won't be piscati fresh. And if it's not, I will close it down. Oh. Yes, I will close my restaurant before I let anyone think Piscetti is not the best they ever tasted. I must pull those weeds, but after working hard all day, I'm too tired to get it all done. George couldn't stop thinking about Chef Piscetti's weed problem. After working hard all day, was too tired to get his work done. Huh? Huh? <laughs> I didn't think you were paying attention. I'll start again. The shoemaker and the elves. Once there was a shoemaker who, after working hard all day, was too tired to get his work done. I am too tired to get it all done, he thought. But if I don't, my customer will have but one shoe and may hop over to another cobbler. He couldn't stay awake. As he slept, an amazing thing happened. Elves did his work for him. When the cobbler awoke, he didn't know how that shoe got finished. George wondered if a little monkey could be an elf for a chef. It's all gone. The weeds and almost all of my veggies. What am I gonna cook? Maybe all those nasty green things George pulled weren't weeds. <laughs> Luckily, they were all right downstairs in the can. This. Roof gophers? <laughs> I must replant everything quickly. <laughs> ah, well, vegetables grow from those seeds. These will be carrots. Those are squash and eggplant. I, I water and fertilize them, and new veggies will grow right here. <laughs> it takes three or four months. That's a long time. Until then, I have no fresh veggies to cook with. So veggies in the store came from a garden. And veggies in a garden came from seeds. Okay, we're all planted. Uh, if only the seeds could magically grow overnight, my problems would be solved. <laughs> Maybe Elf George could help. He needed to count how many carrot seeds were planted. And then he had to get the same amount of carrots from his refrigerator. It's impossible, Chef. Carrots can't grow from seeds overnight. I told you. But they did. And I need to know how it happened so I can make it happen again. So, could you study my dirt? I'll give you a free pizza. Okay, I'll run tests. Uh, can I keep the carrot? Nope, sorry. I'm making soup. <laughs> Oh, Jojo! Hey, look at the carrots we planted. Already grown, huh? <laughs> you know, as long as I have my fresh veggies, I won't have to close down. <laughs> George felt like he'd made a good elf. But 
I wonder why the eggplants and squash did not grow. Oh, he'd forgotten the eggplants and squash. Later, I'm going to plant those. If it works again, tomorrow we'll have peas and arugula. <laughs> Eggplant, <laughs> squash, but where were peas and arugula? <laughs> How could George be an elf without fresh vegetables? <laughs> to, um, do something which I don't know what it would possibly be with all of our vegetables? You're feeding a vegetarian cobbler? <laughs> hmm. Did you plant a can of peas? <gasps> They're growing in cans now? Natty, call the TV news! <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, hi, everybody. <laughs> I, well, um, this would be mine. You see, <clears throat> George, um, <clears throat> wanted, wanted to be your elf. <laughs> oh, you did this so my garden would grow fast? Uh -huh. Oh, Nettie, our garden is not magic. Ah, but your cooking still is. Well, you got me there. That's right, I'm great. I'm gonna cook all these veggies up as lunch for everybody. Come on, oh, I'm hungry. That's quite a talent there. <laughs> I don't know about that. Well, I do. I'm putting you in the town talent show. <laughs> me? In, in front of people? No, no, I, I, I couldn't. I get stage fright. Oh, nonsense. You'll be terrific. How about you? You have any talent? Hey, George. Are you in the show? Great. You can help me. I'm doing the tech stuff. Ropes, ladders, curtains. Sure could use a hand. Ooh. <laughs> and neither George nor Bill missed a single cue. But the most difficult cue was still to come. She's out in all weather, looks stylish in leather, has tons of bovine We're doing so great. True. Just that one big cue left, remember? <laughs> it's not her sirloin steaks, it's the milk she makes. How I love to hear One confetti, now. two curtain, three trap door, four flat, five curtain. Got it? Uh -huh. What starts in her rudder ends up as fresh butter or milk or cream or yogurt. Uh -oh. if you please, Someone could trick. Everything she eats turns into lactose treats. From an ice cream sundae to a taco Got it. with cheese. George, pull trap 3C. Uh huh. No, 1C. <laughs> was odd. Bill was usually so responsible. You can do this. One minute. <laughs> Starts in her order, ends up as fresh butter, or milk or cream or yogurt, if you please. Where could he be? N -n nice skunk. Please don't spray me. Milk and mix her happy, just see her wag her tail. A thousand squirts, it never hurts when I fill up my pail. Okay, just breathe normally. <gasps> Whoa! <laughs> <sighs> Neptune's knickers. Ugh. A skunk! <laughs> just don't alarm it. <gasps> George knew the skunk could spray at any moment and ruin the show. But he also knew the show must go on. Don't upset the skunk. He's gonna spray, he's gonna spray. 
So George concentrated real hard. So whenever you hear mooing, please drop what you're doing and thank this lovely creature here and now. And counted one, A, B, C. She's a topsy turnsy, pure red guernsey, four legged miracle of nature. Look her! <laughs> oh! Uh, hi. Uh, I was going to do some frog calls for you. Here we go. <laughs> Ribbit. Ribbit. George, you were amazing. Maybe the best stagehand ever. And that's about it. Curtain call, everyone. You fellas, too. You know, with all the chaos, I didn't have time to think about being scared, so I wasn't. I must say, those were some fine frog calls. Oh, you're just being kind. <laughs> Huh. Huh. Oh, no. Another blackout? Nope. Watch this. Are we ready, Dr. Levitt? Ready. <sighs> I wanted you to be the first to see. To see that the lights work? You just witnessed the first test of the solar panels I installed to power the museum. We're unveiling them at a party tonight. We're a solar museum. Wow. <laughs> Usually, electricity is made far away and sent in on wires. But now, the museum makes its own power. Ah. Solar panels turn the sun's rays into electricity, which is then stored in these batteries. And they get all their power from the sun. George never knew the sun could charge batteries. <laughs> A remote control spaceship is the perfect hot weather toy. <laughs> Until the batteries run out. Then he remembered how the museum batteries got power from the sun. Ah! So why not let the sun charge up his batteries too? There was something else with batteries that needed charging. George, have you seen the phone? <laughs> it's outside. It should be on its charger. Oh, no. Battery's still dead. <laughs> you wanted the sun to charge it? Well, that's not how solar power works, George. Since the phone won't work, can you take a note to Professor Wiseman for me? <laughs> oh, those are solar panels. They convert the sun's rays to electric power, remember? George forgot about solar panels. That's why the phone didn't charge. <laughs> right! Batteries store the energy the solar panels create, so we have it when we want it, even at night. <laughs> Thanks, George. Five o'clock. 
if I put it in the oven right now, it'll be ready in plenty of time. Oh, another blackout. George, the oven's electric. My lasagna won't cook. Uh, I'd better warn Professor Wiseman we may be late. Or, or worse, lasagna-less. Oh, where did I leave it now? <laughs> There's no way on earth to cook without power. George, that reflected sun is hot. <laughs> that reflected sun is hot. George, you may be a genius. <laughs> a pizza box keeps pizza warm, so it'll hold the heat. <laughs> a hole to let the sun in. Glue on some plastic wrap to keep the heat from getting out again. And shiny aluminum foil to direct the sun's heat into the box. Fantastic! Angle it so the sun hits the lasagna. If the power comes back on, we can put it in the oven. But if it doesn't, I think it'll cook. Hours later, guests arrived at the museum, which was the only building in the whole city with electricity. Ah, how do you have a lights and air conditioning? The whole city is without electricity. Ah, oh, the museum is now solar powered. Blackouts can't affect us. I'm sorry, our power has been out all afternoon. I couldn't make dessert. I know. Poor Dr. Levitt won't have her favorite birthday things. <coughs> Excuse me, Chef. Monkey finger. <gasps> it's hot! It's cooked? We made a solar cooker. Thank George. <laughs> and the sun. Thank you. Nothing could make this birthday more special than a solar lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice of you to teach him to drive the solar car. I thought you taught him. George! <laughs> George! <laughs> George! Come back with that expensive piece of car! It's going to take hours to untangle this mess. We don't have hours. We are due down at the town hall now. <laughs> but so did George. Okay, George. Guard this spaghetti strand with your life. Hello. You have reached Biscettis. Please leave a tasty message. Steve, are you there? Pick up. I have an important question to ask. George wasn't sure if he should pick up the phone. Pick up the phone! <laughs> so George picked up the phone. Uh -huh. Oh, Steve, thank goodness you answered! We need for you to check on something for us, eh? <laughs> yeah, please go outside and tell me how tall the building next to our building is. <laughs> <laughs> Yoki got in. She felt very clever. For a second. How is he going to do it? Since he knew he was two feet tall, maybe he could use himself as a measuring tool. Oh, 
Okay, that was one George. But how many Georges tall was the building? If only he had something like that measuring tape. <gasps> or why not that measuring tape? <laughs> hello, hello, Steve! Do you have an answer for me? <laughs> George knew he had to keep Gnocchi away from that spaghetti strand. He had an idea how to do it. This was going great. 10 feet, 15 feet, 20 feet. Uh-oh. The tape measure was only 20 feet long but the building was more than 20 feet tall. But how much more? There's Biscetti's restaurant. And here's Chef Biscetti's strand of spaghetti. <laughs> I have got to get a picture of this. George could see that the spaghetti wasn't touching the ground. When George held the strand at the top of his head, it reached the ground. That meant the building was exactly one spaghetti strand and one George tall. Love this. Stevie, why you don't come back in the middle? Oh, you're Ginny, the world record book lady. And you must be Chef Piscetti. <laughs> yes, yes. And up there on the roof, is that your monkey friend? Yes, uh, yeah, mug. Uh, <gasps> Giorgio! Displaying your super long spaghetti strand. Here's the photograph I just took of it. Wow! Does that set a world record, Jenny? Oh, I'm afraid not. Here's the picture I took of Alfonso Dimitri displaying his strand of cooked spaghetti from the Leaning Tower of Pisa. No, oh, no. Now I'm never gonna get in the world record book. You most certainly will. You have the second longest strand of cooked spaghetti. Three stories tall. Son of the wow, God! <laughs> so Gnocchi finally got to play with the spaghetti. And Chef Piscetti broke a second record. World's longest cat toy. Huh? This hard stuff was spaghetti? didn't smell like anything. He'd seen the chef put the rest of it in the pot. It didn't smell like much. It had changed. Maybe, maybe it wasn't just donut makers. Maybe all kitchens. The great big onion looked pretty hard. Uh, well, didn't have to taste good, just turned floppy. If sugar were soft and floppy, instead of grainy, you could chew it all day like gum. He put some sugar in the floppification pot. It disappeared. That puffy-making oven was even more amazing than the floppification pot. Oh, oh my goodness. If Salatesio likes my food, she's tell everybody to eat here. <laughs> Wish me luck! <laughs> At least I still have this batch of plain spaghetti. George <laughs> knew the chef would be happy with all the fun extra things he'd turned floppy. Who turned my plain pasta into crowded spoon soup? <laughs> Somehow, floppification didn't work on spoons. There isn't one cherry tomato in this salad. You promised cherry tomatoes. <laughs> well, I... Oh, oh, don't do it. 
Wait, no, please. I. Ugh. I don't like this at all. But it smells good. She was right. The longer that stuff stayed in the floppifying pot, the better it smelled. Do you know there's a cat and a monkey in your kitchen? Oh. <laughs> Uh, the monkey uh, made the stew. Ooh, quite good. Oh, but you said you don't like it. If you made it, it's no good. But for a monkey, woohoo! What's his recipe? Well, uh... Never mind, I got it. Chef Biscetti didn't scold George much, but he insisted George clean up the mess he made. Oh, you're lucky you got the four heads. You can do things twice as quickly. <laughs> I wish I knew how you chose these ingredients. Asparagus. The green spears turned out nice and floppy. One hard-boiled egg. <laughs> but the egg didn't look floppy at all. Eggs don't floppify. <laughs> they get harder. A lot of cheese. And cheese becomes goop. Cooking seemed to have no rules at all. I'm done! You said there'd be cookies. Please, this dish was excellent. What do you call it? Sudden emergency ravioli. And a meatball. Four stars. And another star for the meatball. I'll give your monkey a star, too. Oh, I'm so generous. Hot cookies coming up as promised! How did he make that into that? Maybe kitchens aren't magic. Maybe it's cooks who are magic. Yoki, how you can lose so many balls, huh? Any day that starts out just smelling <laughs> and ends with a cookie <laughs> is a pretty great day. Well, there's everything you need and a cool cap. Now, window washing is serious work. You take your work seriously. I like that in a monkey. Hard not to look inside, but George concentrated on his work. Tammy! Oh, he's gone! Where'd I go wrong? I should have bought the padded hamster wheel. found you in there. Thank you, Window Monkey! Are you here to fix the lights? It's always too dark in here to read. <laughs> Could a giraffe live here? Well, it was possible. George wondered if the giraffe lived here with a friend, like the man with the yellow hat. <laughs> the giraffe and the zebra weren't saying hi. Maybe they couldn't see George in the dark. <laughs> there weren't any animals here at all. George was thrilled someone was here to see what he'd done. People didn't seem happy. Hmm. Maybe they needed to see it again. <laughs> now, with the lights off or the lights on, everyone could see the same animals that George saw.
did you do this? No, that monkey must have done it. George had seen people this unhappy before. They usually <laughs> needed some quiet time alone. Monkey paints room, human painter upset. That's gotta be George. <laughs> That's just a bird. George liked his bird okay, but he knew he could make a much better bunny. What? It's a bunny. I want to talk with you, George. Did you paint a room, you naughty monkey? I don't know how to thank you, George. Yes, I thank him. Thank him? Thank him? <laughs> you know, I would have thought that was a horsey. But whoa, it's a zebra. Only a genius or a monkey could have thought of this. I can read it out as the Glass Palace Jungle Room. George, the Glass Palace is always half empty. But with more special rooms like this, I bet the glass is gonna be half full. <laughs> Have a good day. Yes, George had a job today, and it turned out just great. <laughs> <laughs> Hunley seems happy we're home. Hunley was very happy to know George was home and the city was still working just fine. I think he's just hungry. Now George realized he had to get the feeder far from the tree trunk so Jumpy couldn't jump to it. No squirrel could jump from the tree trunk all the way over here. <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> Dropping straight down seemed dangerous. Then Jumpy discovered he had another choice. George wanted to stay here and watch happy birds eat. <laughs> Jumpy was at home in trees, so George needed to move the feeder away from trees. But where? There's only one way to stop this squirrel. George stood guard, making sure the birds got their food. This worked. <laughs> oh, 
he didn't move from that spot till the feeder was empty. This much. What was he doing with it all? Jumpy wasn't eating the food. But why was he bringing it here? Huh. That's the bowl Bill always filled with squirrel food. Huh. Of course. Bill wasn't around to fill it, so Jumpy was doing it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So George brought over plenty of food, and Jumpy left the bird feeder alone. There had to be plenty of food, because Jumpy wasn't the only one dining. <laughs> Even with no bunnies to feed, it turned out to be a pretty nice weekend in the country. <laughs> Though this food was definitely for the birds. Right outside, it was the best game of Cat Tries to Catch a Plane ever. Until... This wasn't here before. It must be what they made from those bones. Yoki wanted that plane. George wanted to help Yoki get down, but he couldn't reach her. Just because it came apart doesn't mean it's ruined, George. <laughs> but maybe it mattered which bone went where. All right, let's see my skeleton. But, but we just ordered dessert. Uh, dessert? Uh, of oh, course, sorry. of course. This memory of mine. But I'm anxious to know how you've handled my precious bones. George's skeleton didn't look as good as that other one. Even though they looked almost the same before. If they look the same, he could figure out where the bones belonged by using the other one as a guide. <laughs> so, am I forgetting anything? Or is it now time to see how you've taken care of my baby? <sighs> it's time. Oh, I'm nervous. You have nothing to be nervous about whatsoever. George had one side of the skeleton finished. When he noticed... Both sides looked the same, 
except opposite. He could finish by matching the remaining bones to what he'd already done. Gnocchi wished this bone game would end so they could play something cats were good at. I'll admit I'm worried. No one else but I has ever handled those bones before today. Only our best people have been involved. <laughs> oh! Oh, boy. Your best people are a monkey and a cat? George! <laughs> well, this isn't the skull we put on it. It seems George was switching them. I don't know why. I do. The monkey's right. The, the monkey's, monkey's right? <laughs> that old skull never looked right. I think George has correctly matched the cranial structure. Huh? Now I wish I'd loaned this out years ago. I want George to check all my future work. <laughs> And that went on record as the first scientific discovery made by a monkey. Oh! <laughs> Assisted by a cat from an Italian restaurant. Yeah.